When I bought my first house, I did it all wrong. I paid full retail, I didn't run any numbers. Thank heavens I've had friends and I rented out the rooms to them, but I was paying way too much money, bought too big of a house. But it is what it is, we all make mistakes. I then got married, thereby kicking out my friends, losing that income that I didn't necessarily know was that important, and we began to live our life. 2008 comes, market crashes, house goes down $130,000, I'm extremely upside down. I change jobs, life's going nuts. So I negotiate with the bank to do a short sale. We end up selling it to somebody. The bank takes a hit and a loss and my credit takes a ding with a short sale. All wrong, right? That's the start of my real estate career. <laughs> but that brings us to the second house that I bought. The one that actually became my first rental property. Going through that first property helped me realize that I wanted to own real estate, but it needed to sustain cash flow. I rented out those rooms to my friends in the first one, but it didn't stay there. I got married, they left, the money left too. I needed properties that were gonna bring me money in no matter what, sustainable cash flow. So now I'm looking, ready to buy my second house. I didn't have any money, I was broke. The only money I had was $5,000 that I had just got from a tax refund. But I needed to buy a house so bad and turn it into a rental. I couldn't qualify for a bank loan as an investment property. So the next best thing, buy a house and then in the future turn it into a rental property. So I took all $5,000, I threw it all in. I had to buy it as my primary residence and I had to use an FHA loan, which cost a little bit more in fees and monthly expense. But you do what you gotta do and I became a homeowner again. Yay! You have to live in it for two years as a primary residence when you do an FHA loan, but I had to stay there. And I had to stay there anyways because life happened. Change jobs again. We had our first kid. No big deal. Nothing big. I just had to learn how to become a parent. So it took longer than two years. But eventually I got there. I jumped through all the hoops. So I put some tenants in and I made it. To me, it was par for the course, but I needed more. If you guys like hearing about all the things I've done wrong and some of the things I've done right, like and subscribe. Enough about me, let's talk about you. You might be just like I was. Maybe you don't have anything. Maybe you're starting out doing your first deal. Maybe not. Maybe you already have a deal or two and you're looking to buy another one. But you're on YouTube trying to find the next hot thing. The thing that's going to solve your problem, going to make you a million dollars overnight. But 99% of people don't make the million bucks. And the people that do can't keep it. I talked about sustaining cash flow. I want to sustain. I want that money to be with me and coming in every month forever. So how do you buy a sustainable cash flow rental? Well, obviously, you need to find a deal, but the most important part is underwriting it conservatively, like a long-term rental. Some people, they want to do an Airbnb and they're going to underwrite it like an Airbnb. That's a no-go for me. I might do an Airbnb, but I'm going to underwrite it like a long-term rental. Because what if the law changes? If that law changes and you can't do Airbnb anymore, but yet you took on so much debt because you're going to rent it out for so much money with Airbnb, never put yourself in a position where you're going to lose the property. Underwrite it conservatively like a long-term rental. Now, let's go over how we tweak. How do I make even more money? Some of the tweaks that I do to help give my investment properties a boost. The very first thing is I'm going to increase rents over time. I'm going to make sure I buy in a place where the population is not going down. It's going up where demand is increasing. So my rent will go up as well over time. Every year, every two years, at least at turnover with a new tenant, I'm going to increase that rent. I'm still always going to get the rent though that I did the math with originally when I underwrote the property. So now this is more. Then I'm going to look, well, what else could I do with the property? Do I have an empty garage, an empty basement that I could separate? Do I have sheds or could I put a shed on there for more storage? People will pay for storage. Do you have more land where you could put corrals and store people's horses and they could just drive up separately on a different side and you could still rent out the house as a traditional rental. So I'm looking for all these extra opportunities that I could do to make more money, more income from it than just the traditional rental. 
then separately, do I want to do a long-term rental or do I want to employ a different strategy because it could maybe get me more money? I'm going to look into Airbnb. I'm going to look into a midterm rental, 30 days plus. I'm going to look into a corporate rental, renting it out to a company where they can bring in and out their own people. What about traveling nurses? What about student housing? If I can rent out each room individually, my net will be a lot more other issues possibly I have to deal with, but these are all different strategies I can do. And if I have to stop doing any of them, I still have the long-term rental strategy as a backup that I know will make money because I've already ran the numbers. Other ways you can make money. What about laundry? If it's multifamily, you can add laundry into the individual units. That will increase rent. If it's a single family house, what if the laundry's in the garage? On that little step up sometimes, at least we have in Arizona. You could probably enclose that, add air conditioning. That's gonna increase your rent. There's a lot of different services that you can do to increase your rent. You could go even bigger. You could do an ADU, build an additional dwelling unit, a guest house. Put a little fence in between, create two access points. You could rent out the main house as long term, do Airbnb with the guest house, or do Airbnb or midterm to both houses. It's your playground. You just have to run the numbers and find out if it's worth it to you. Tweet, tweet, get more and more and more money from that. Other things like when you're doing Airbnb, you could put on a pool heater and charge for that. I could keep thinking and thinking and come up with more options. If you think of some, put them in the comments. I want to know them, so leave those comments down below. Now, adding value and creating more income is one way. You could also cut expenses. Typically, this is kind of through doing upgrades, whether it be with windows or more efficient air conditioning unit, etc. These can work really well if you're in charge of the utility like with Airbnb. You do have those options as well. I know people are looking for secrets. Sometimes it's get rich quick, but there's no secret sauce. You just need cash flow. You need sustainable cash flow and to keep it for a long time. That's the real gold mine. The point is go find a good deal, underwrite it conservatively like a long-term rental, and then tweak the heck out of it. Go find out ways to make more money. I know if you sit down, think outside the box, you'll come up with some of your own. I know that you can do this. I'm going to do it more. Go watch the other videos. If you like this, like and subscribe. Don't forget. So until next time, peace.